So we are going to talk about behaviors. It's a crazy time right now, and we have had so many parents coming to us with questions about behaviors and, and how to address some of the child's behaviors that we're helping them work through, especially right now with the pandemic, with virtual schooling, kids stuck at home. A lot of parents are, are facing behaviors and trying to figure out how to shift those behaviors into effective communications or behaviors that we really want to see. So if you haven't yet read our post, um, Not All Behaviors Are Created Equal, I will link to that below. We definitely recommend checking that out. We, we really dive into this and break it all down. These are there four main reasons that any behavior occurs for the most part, whether it's a child, it's a tantrum, whether it's a child with ASD, a typically developing child, a young child, an older child, there's pretty much always four reasons that behavior is occurring. One is access. They want access to something, a toy, an object, an activity. They want access to something. Two is escape. They want to get out of having to do something. And escape doesn't always look like a child running away. And some parents get confused with this. It doesn't always mean that they are literally physically running away, but they are doing a behavior to get out of whatever it is you're asking of them or the environment or the activity, they're protesting whatever that activity or environment is. The third is attention. So they are seeking your attention and this can be a tricky one because it's not always positive attention. It's not always even that they want your praise and you know your positive attention, it can also be negative attention. And sometimes this is hard as parents to understand why a child would want negative attention, but it's very real. So even telling them no or you know, if you are yelling at them or reacting in a certain way, that could be what they're looking for. So that's number three. And then the fourth one is sensory, that either they're sensory seeking, they're acting out in a certain way because they're seeking that sensory input, or they are responding to a sensory stimulus that, you know, maybe it's overwhelming to them or that, you know, that it's uncomfortable to, uncomfortable to them for whatever reason. We could spend hours talking about sensory, that's for a whole nother day. If you do feel like your child is having some behaviors because of sensory issues, I definitely recommend checking out our blog post, um, Understanding Your Child's Sensory Needs, which I will also link to below. We really dive into this. You can grab your free sensory cheat sheet where we go through each of the sensory systems and some strategies to try for each and really understanding that whole side of things, which is a, which is a whole nother um, topic. but. The other three, and depending on, as parents, depending on which of these reasons is causing the child's behavior or is the reason for the child's behavior, how we respond to that in order to decrease the unwanted behavior is completely different. So as parents, it really is important for us to understand why our child is acting a certain way, whether it's a tantrum, whether, you know, whatever, whatever it is, whatever the behavior is, you have to understand where it's coming from to figure out how to properly respond to it. And then really our goal is to shift that behavior into communication, into more effective communication, because behavior is communication. Like that's their point. Most of the time, like the child is communicating something to you through their behavior. They may communicate, be communicating that they want something, they don't want something, they don't like something, they want your attention, but they're that they are communicating to you. So we need to figure out how to shift that, that form of communication into a more effective communication. When they're younger kiddos or developmentally delayed kiddos, sometimes we're trying to shift that behavior into language, into them telling us how they're feeling, what they like, what they don't like, what they want. We want them to be able to communicate that to us through language or at least in a more effective way. And if that is a topic that you are interested in or where you're at in your parenting journey, I definitely recommend our parent course, Do It Yourself Language Development, where Dana Buckles, our speech language pathologist, really dives into this, into these different areas, these different functions of behavior, what they look like, and how as a parent is the best way to respond in order to promote language. And that's the whole goal of that course, is figuring out the behavior, how to decrease that behavior and promote language development. 
So if that's where you're at with your child and you really want to see them, see the behaviors decrease and see their language increase, see them talking more and being able to either begin to begin to use words to communicate or increase the amount of words that they're using, definitely look into that course. I will link to it below. I highly recommend that for you. I do also want to touch on two other aspects um, that can two other aspects that can create behaviors that I just want to mention here because we dealt with them with my son to a great degree, and that is anxiety and OCD. So we're not going to go into those here. Um, feel free to reach out to me if you're having some concerns with that and need help getting pointed in the right direction. But you know, with our son Noah, we saw huge gains in his behaviors, decreases in his behaviors, and improvement in his language, but when his anxiety and OCD started to increase and really started to come out, we saw huge aggression. We saw a lot of aggression, behaviors. It, it was impossible for him to learn to communicate, learn to use language, to, to learn it all and to continue to thrive and grow because the anxiety and some of the OCD tendencies were really ruling his life. And at that point, all the behavior strategies that we could go over were not helping. I mean, we were working with you know, behavioral therapists, occupational therapists, speech therapists. We had everyone in the world, psychologists, and none of these strategies that you know we talked about here would help. We needed to address the underlying anxiety and, and OCD. And once we addressed that, it was night and day life changing that we were then able to teach him how to communicate, teach him how to understand his emotions and deal with the behaviors that we were seeing. But first we had to address that. So I do want to throw that out there because that can play a part. So, you know, if you think you're seeing something that is more anxiety driven and OCD driven, you definitely want to talk to your child's physician about that because that's a different, a totally different story. And still all of the things that we talk about with behavior and sensory absolutely play a part, but you may also have to talk with a physician about addressing those underlying issues as well to really help your child the most. But let us know, comment below, let me know what, what you're seeing, what types of behaviors you're seeing, what challenges you're having. We're here to help. We will jump back on and, and talk more about each of those different behaviors and how to best respond and work with them. Um, and definitely we'll be diving more into the sensory issues. Let's start with those two blog posts, our behavior blog posts and our sensory blog posts. If you want to um, dive deeper into either of those areas and definitely check out our do-it-yourself language development parent training because that re that's where we really dive into reflecting as a parent on what are we doing as a parent? How are we responding to our child's behaviors or just the how are we setting up the environment for a younger child and how do we help shift that into promoting language at home and what can we do as parents to really help to promote language and decrease some of those unwanted behaviors. So if you want to learn more about behaviors and promoting language at home, make sure you subscribe now so you don't miss our future trainings and check out our link below to more information on our DIY parent course and our blog posts on behavior and sensory.